Well, I know you're worried about this Baltimore bridge that came down and shipping and everything else going on, but fear not. Joe Biden is going to Baltimore on Friday. Let us hope he has all kinds of extra Secret Service protection in that town. So joining me now, because we don't have access to Biden's expertise just yet, is my friend Ross Kennedy, founder of Fortis Analysis, and he actually is an expert on all things shipping and whatnot. Ross, I understand you are on location in Baltimore as we speak. Are you currently being robbed? I am not currently being robbed. Uh, now I'm at Sparrows Point right now, very uh, safe area of the city. Uh, just left the Incident Command Center here a little bit ago, and uh, kind of got a flavor for what's uh, you know for what's happening, what some of the challenges are. Progress being made. It's been a uh, been an interesting day so far, and it's certainly not over yet. Okay, Ross, give us a breakdown. Those of us who don't understand shipping, international shipping, bridges, things like that. What are the challenges? Because I'll be honest, brother. Every person I talk to, especially over the past few days, all they're telling me is, "Wow, this is challenging. Wow, this is bad. This is going to take longer than I thought." I have not heard one positive report on, hey, we're moving things along and things are going great. What's happening on the ground? So there's, uh, you know, the good progress that's being made right now. You're seeing, uh, you are starting to see some assets mobilize and move in. Uh, Incident Command Center is, is fully up and running. Uh, certainly special compliments to, uh, to Governor Moore here in, in Maryland. Really has stepped in a way you don't always see uh, state-level leadership do to uh, help make sure that, you know, resources are moving. Uh, that, that, you know, positive messaging is going out about it. Uh, really some of the biggest challenges that they're having here, though, is the fact that there's still a uh, disintermediated, if you will, kind of chain of command happening where uh, a lot of activity is happening inside different silos. They're having to bring it back together. There's not yet what seems to be kind of a, a clear operating picture, you know, of, of the entire challenge. You have uh, the vessel itself that has to be salvaged. There is a, uh, a salvage and marine recovery uh, group that's working on that. They've got divers down right now. They're utilizing aerial imagery uh, to help kind of keep a, a clear line of sight to things. But then you have a second company that's doing the, the salvage and recovery effort on the uh, larger part of the bridge that's actually in the water. So you've got two different companies working in the same area solving, you know, in, in different ways for some of what the same issue is. And then really above all of that, you have the Port Authority uh, and you have stakeholders uh, from the different terminals, uh, trucking companies as well. Uh, so there's a lot of people that don't, you know, that, that have skin in the game, but don't necessarily have a, a voice, if you will, to be heard as far as what, how their operations, their businesses are being impacted by all of this. Uh, and it really seems like we're still kind of weeks away from all of these entities talking to each other the way they should. Okay, I'm, I'm glad you brought up that last part because that's really my next question, Ross. In fact, it's a two-part question. Who's in charge and who's paying for all this? Is this the U.S. government? Is this Maryland? This certainly is not going to be an exclusively private matter, at least I don't think, although you can obviously correct me on this. But as you well know, there needs to be one dude in charge, and it doesn't sound like that's the case. So a large part of the recovery effort is being uh, currently uh, managed and, and checks are being distributed uh, by the Navy. Uh, so they have an individual that's on scene that's primarily going to be concerned with uh, trying to understand what the resources are uh, and then moving the dollars through uh, the public and private center sector entities uh, that, that you know have the ball. They're, they're the ones putting the cranes in. They're the ones putting divers in the water that are you know doing the cutting of the metal. Um, on the private sector side, as far as, you know, funds, uh, you know, the insurance provider uh, and, and, you know, local stakeholders, if you will, that are directly involved with the vessel, uh, they're going to be paying for uh, the, the vessel recovery itself. But really, their, their checks stop when you get, as you can see in the photo that you guys are putting up now, there's about 4,000 tons of steel on top of the bridge. And that all requires uh, experts who are, uh, you know, cutting, welding, underwater diving, but their, their one mission in life is to get this vessel refloated and moved out of the way so the larger recovery effort that's being paid for by the Navy uh, and implemented through the private sector with some Coast Guard, Army Corps of Engineers, uh, you know, involved in that as well. So there's several buckets of money that, that are all kind of involved here and everybody's kind of trying to figure out where does your lane of effort, you know, end and thus your pile of money and where does mine begin and my pile of money 
And uh, th there's still some real, I think, confusion around uh, how that's going to look and, and you know, when one check writing authority turns off and another one turns on. Uh, and that really seems to be a big part of the challenge right now. And that leads me to the private companies. As you mentioned, a major port like this, I, I believe it's top 15, top 10 in the United States of America, tens of billions of dollars flow through there. There's a lot of private interests with a lot of money flowing back and forth that's not currently floating back or flowing back and forth, Ross. How, what do they do? If, if I've got uh, uh, Kelly's cheeseburgers and we run shipping out of that port, how am I getting right? That's right. So... On the other side of the uh, of the bridge disaster, if you will, sort of, uh, you know, that secret terminal that's uh, like Reports America, for example, operates the largest container terminal here. Uh, they're they're effectively at a full standstill as far as waterborne operations. Uh, however, uh, CSX uh, Railroad has set up a. Uh, they're trying to get to it daily, but it's it's really kind of every couple of days now. Uh, about a hundred uh, containers at a time coming out of the port of New York. Uh, the Port of Norfolk has jumped in and, and activated a, uh, a small vessel service that's running coastwise, uh, you know, being able to bring containers up. Uh, but the big challenge there is, is that all of your uh, on water capacity to be able to lift containers and move them to shore is on the wrong side of the bridge issue. Uh, so you, ha you do have uh, Trade Point here, Trade Point Americas. Uh, th that's the facility I'm sitting outside of right now, about to go in and uh, talk to some individuals there and understand what their challenges are and you know what we can do about it. Uh, this facility is capable as far as having the space to do it, but they don't have the cranes available. And it's also become kind of the staging location where a lot of the metal they are starting to cut and move on barge. They're just kind of having to lay it right there, uh, you know, on the pad, uh, on the water, if you will. So there's still not the right kind of resources that are coming in from the private sector side or the right questions in a lot of cases aren't even being asked. There's only a couple of companies that are trying to do all this planning as far as, you know, who's, who's all the stakeholders? What do they need? What assets and resources do they need? And right now the, the effort is so focused on refloating the vessel and beginning to remove pieces of the bridge that the economic stakeholders here, you know, Amazon has got a huge distribution center behind me. You've got the car terminal as well, where a lot of the roll on roll off work is being done. These guys are trying to utilize their resources as best as possible to be of assistance, but it's it's often forcing their own economic interests to take a back seat. And so that's really where a lot of the effort, you know, people are trying to come in, they're flying in, they're doing what they can to try to be a part of the actual, you know, salvage effort on the water. But at the same time, there's billions of dollars in economic activity here whose voices aren't being heard. The questions aren't being asked of what do you need, who can provide it, and how do we get it here? So a lot of the work that I'm doing here is trying to interface with these individuals and these organizations to try to bring some private sector solutions to the table where private sector is solving for its own challenges.